Well, I want to continue today to teach you about knowing God as he wants to be known. But I first want to pray for your needs. I know that we've prayed and believe God, but I want to add my faith to yours as well. Father, thank you for every need that is existing in each person's life connected here today, that you will supply all their need according to your riches. Lord, I thank you that you are not limited to this world's economy. You are not limited to the ups and downs. You are not limited to gas prices and inflation. You are an unlimited provider and you know our needs before we even ask. But we do ask to supply every person's needs. Let there be increase. Let there be supernatural blessing, supernatural provision, supernatural deliverance. In Jesus name. Amen. Well, you know, one of the things that will truly bring the blessing of God in our lives is the unity that we have with each other. So before I teach on knowing God as he wants to be known, I want to remind you that Jesus wants us to experience unity in the same way that he experiences unity with the father. That's why he says in John chapter 17, verse 20, my prayer is not for them alone, not for these disciples alone, but I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. And then the New Living Translation says, I'm praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. And then get this, the Berean version. I am not asking on behalf of them alone, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their message that all of them may be one that all of them may be one as you, Father, are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me so that they may be one as we are one. What a powerful promise of what will help win this world to Jesus is our unity. And I believe that God has called us to lead from the front on bringing unity in the church and in our communities and in our nation and the world. And if you want to get on track to a life of God's promises, a fruitful life, remember the scripture in Isaiah 65, eight, thus says the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster and one says, do not destroy it, do not destroy the cluster of grapes for a blessing is in it. You see, he says the blessing is in the cluster. Let's not disconnect. Let's not allow the enemy to disconnect us. Let's not allow the enemy to destroy our cluster. When we're together, we produce supernatural wine. We produce supernatural blessing. Let's not destroy the connection. Let's not let the devil destroy the connection either. Now, first, we said last time together on this to know God is to know his love. That's his passion. Why is it called the passion of Christ? It is because that's what he is. He is passionate for you. His passion is the proof of his accepting you, his approving of you and his affection for you. His passion means he suffered, he endured. That's what the word literally means. It means suffering to endure, to he bore our sins, our sickness and our shame because no one suffers for another person willfully without love. That's passion. We need to know God the way he wants to be known. And he is love and he is passion. And that's why he suffered for you and for me. Secondly, to know God the way he wants to be known is to know his promises of goodness. So first, we need to know his passion, his love for us. Second, we need to know his promises of goodness or his good promises. I like what it says in first Kings, chapter eight, verse fifty six. Praise be to the Lord who has given rest to his people, Israel, just as he promised. Not one word has failed of all the good promises that he gave. Listen for a moment to that again. Not one word has failed of all the good promises that he gave. Wow. So I want us to get to know God's goodness in every way and what God's goodness can do in our lives. You see, this world is full of badness. This world is full of negativity. It's full of bad people. It's full of the devil. It's full of 
problems and heartbreak. But Psalm 33, verse five, even though this world is full of bad things. Psalm 33, verse five says the earth is full of the goodness of God. The earth is full of the goodness of God. And when it says the goodness of God, it's the word has in Hebrew. It means goodness, kindness, faithfulness and loving de devotion, goodness, kindness, faithfulness and loving devotion. You see, to know God the way he wants to be known. Don't we want that intimacy with God, the intimacy that Jesus described that he and the father had? He said we can have that with him also and we can have that with each other. But I want you to see that the world, though it's full, this world system is full of bad things, but the earth is full of the goodness of God. Man, if you're standing on some earth today, if you're standing on a floor today or sitting on a chair today, you are on this earth and you should get ready to run into the goodness of God because the earth is full of the goodness of God. Do you know wherever you go on this earth, you can find the goodness of God somewhere showing up in some way. Can you find bad things? Yes. If you look for that and you're focused on the bad, you'll find the bad things. But if you will focus on looking for the good, expecting the good, believing that the goodness is all around you, believing that the goodness is filling this earth. The Bible says that his goodness and his glory will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. I just want to encourage you today that not only can we know God by knowing his passion and his love for us, but we can know him by knowing his goodness and his promises of goodness in our lives. And these are some of the things that God promises will happen when you understand the goodness of God. The goodness of God has the power to do miraculous things in your life. The goodness of God has the power to do miraculous things in your life. And let me give you those miraculous things. Number one, the goodness of God explains everything. The goodness of God explains everything. The Bible says, for you are not a God in Psalm chapter five, verse four, for you are not not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness. No evil dwells with you. And then one of my favorite verses, Psalm, excuse me, Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. Joseph said to his brothers, you meant it for evil. What you did to me, you meant evil, but God meant it for good. In other words, God's goodness explains everything. When things are going bad in your life, you need to realize that life might have intended it for evil. Somebody else might have intended it for evil. What happened in your life? The devil definitely intended it for evil, but God meant it for good. The devil sent it for evil. God bent it for good. We can never lose sight of the fact that we do not have to live in the worry and fear of what it looks like in the natural circumstances because God's goodness explains everything. There is an explanation for whatever you're going through. God's goodness is going to turn that bad situation into something good that explains everything. So no matter what happens, you might not be able to be able to explain why it happened, but you can explain the goodness of God explains that it will turn into something good. The goodness of God solves unexplainable bad that happens in our lives by turning that unexplainable bad into something good. And that's why I say that the goodness of God explains everything. So many people are confused. So many people ask questions like, why is this happening? And why is that happening? And why is God allowing this in the world? And why is God allowing that in the world? And while God is not the one who causes the bad in the world, we do have questions sometimes, don't we? We can't explain why we're suffering. We can't explain why we're struggling. We can't explain why something really bad happened in our lives. But the goodness of God is the overarching explanation for it all, that no matter what pain you've gone through, no matter what pain you're going through, it's that pain that God will take you through into something better and into where you were intended to be. That pain is turning something bad into something good in your life. It might not be that God sent that pain because he certainly doesn't send pain. Life sends enough of it. We don't need God to add to it. Right. But God, his goodness explains it all, puts things in perspective and helps us to realize that no matter no matter how many things we can't explain why they happened or how they happened, God's goodness explains them all 
by, by assuring us that something good is going to come out of something bad. I believe that about God, don't you? That's the goodness of God. That's a promise of God's goodness, a miraculous promise, by the way. So number one, the goodness of God explains everything. Number two, the goodness of God surrounds everything. The goodness of God surrounds everything. It's present in everything. The Bible says in Psalm 23, verse six, his goodness follows us all the days of our lives. Every day of our lives, we can expect to be surrounded. We can expect to be followed by. We can expect to be pursued by the goodness of God. Think about that for a moment. We can expect to be surrounded no matter what seems like it's surrounding you. There is a layer of goodness protecting you from whatever else might be surrounding you. There's goodness protecting you. And then there's some goodness overarching over the bad thing that is surrounding you. And you are surrounded and sev on several layers. You are surrounded by the goodness of God. You know, one of my favorite verses is in Psalm 27, verse 13. He said, I would have despaired, David said, unless I believed that I would see the goodness of God in the land of the living. I would have despaired. That word despair means to be utterly at a loss, utterly without hope, utterly without a good alternative, without an exit strategy. And you know what? There are plenty of things in our lives that bring despair. But despair gets swallowed up when we realize God's goodness is about to show up. Despair gets swallowed up when we realize God's goodness surrounds everything. I'm going through a bad week. God's goodness surrounds my week. I'm going through a bad month. God's goodness surrounds my month. I'm going through a bad situation in a relationship. God's goodness surrounds. God's goodness surrounds that relationship. I'm going through a bad time financially. God's goodness surrounds my financial world and God's goodness is going to show up in your life because it surrounds you. If you run this way, you're going to run into some goodness. If you go backwards, you're going to run into some goodness. If you go forward, you're going to run into some goodness. If you go to the left or to the right, you're going to run into some goodness. Why? Because the goodness of God surrounds you. No matter what you feel is around you, believe God's goodness surrounds you because that's what his goodness does. The goodness of God explains everything. Number one, the goodness of God surrounds everything. Number two, the goodness of God. Number three, the goodness of God frees you from everything. Boy, there's something about really putting your faith in the goodness of God. I would have despaired, David said, unless I believed, right? Unless I believed, I would see the goodness of God. God's goodness heals me from despair. God's goodness heals me from depression. God's goodness heals me from experiencing negative emotions. God's goodness frees me from everything that is toxic in my life. God's goodness frees me. I love the fact that David said, I'll despair unless I believe. What are we supposed to believe? We're supposed to believe in his goodness and we're supposed to believe we're going to see his goodness. He said. I'm going to see his goodness in the land of the living to see his goodness to the word see. It means to have access to it. It means he will make me see it. It means I will experience it. It means it will happen in this lifetime. That's what that verse tells us. What a powerful promise from God. And then Genesis 50, verse 20. It says right here that what robs us of our dream, well, what you'll see is what I want to demonstrate from this verse. What robs us of our dream is the belief that others hold the power to determine the outcome of our lives. That's giving people too much power, giving people too much power means giving them the power to either make you happy or make you a success. This is so often why people don't forgive the belief that what they did to you. The belief that what somebody did to you has the power to stop your destiny. The belief that what somebody did to you has the power to determine the outcome of your life. We got to stop believing that we got to believe that the goodness of God frees us from toxic people and toxic things that have been done to us, things that would make us bitter because you know what bitterness is? 
Bitterness is simply the fruit or the evidence that we don't believe in the goodness of God. Bitterness is the evidence that we're not believing that the goodness of God is going to show up in our lives. You see, goodness frees us from everything that is keeping us in bondage. It frees us from all negative emotions like bitterness. You know, you might have heard the story I've told about a pastor who visited a 17 year old kid who had been in and out of the hospital for years because of a shattered back that he experienced in an accident. And the young man said, I want you to know, Pastor, I believe God is good. The pastor said, how many years have you spent in and out of the hospital, son? The boy said 13 years and the pastor responded. And after all that, you'll still you still believe that God is good. The little the boy, the six, six, 17 year old boy answered and said, absolutely, because he has all eternity to make it up to me. No matter what I've suffered, God has all eternity to make it up to me. When something bad happens in your life, you have a choice to believe that that bad thing has the power to control you and make you bitter or to believe that that bad thing is going to deliver you or you're going to be delivered from that bad thing. And that bad thing doesn't control your view of God. So many people, when they when something bad happens in their life, they interpret that as God's letting me down or God's not coming through or God must be judging me or what's going to happen now. I don't believe God could allow this to happen. And you see this this young man, he didn't have that attitude. He could have been he could have become bitter. He could have felt like a victim. I, I can't believe God gave me this back. That's not really good. And I've had to have surgeries and I've had to be in hospitals and I've had to be in pain a lot of my, a lot of the early years of my life. He could have said that, but instead he expected God to make up for what was going bad in his life and what was bad in his life. I tell you this, the goodness of God frees you from everything that is toxic, from everything that is negative, from every bit of bitterness. Boy, if we could really get a hold of the fact that no matter how bad of a hand that we've been dealt, no matter how hurt somebody has made us, no matter how much pain someone has inflicted in our life, no matter how much pain life has inflicted in our lives, we can hold fast to this truth that the goodness of God frees us from being under the control of any person or anything or any emotion. The goodness of God frees you from everything. I want you to declare that. Say the goodness of God frees me from everything. The goodness of God frees me from people having power over my life. The goodness of God frees me from negative circumstances having power over my life. The goodness of God frees me. Say that the goodness of God frees me from negative emotions having control of my life. I believe say this. I believe God is going to make it up to me. I believe God is going to turn it around. I believe God is going to show me a way out of this that I'm that I can't get in a way out of this that I can't get out of or a way into this that I can't find a way in. And number four, the goodness of God satisfies everything. You know, dissatisfaction and discontentment in life can make us real bitter when something negative happens, when things aren't going our way when we're not when we get to 30 and we thought I'd be much further in my life by now, 40. I'd be much further in my life by now, 50. I wish I was more much further in my life than I am right now. You know, life with a God of wrath will never be satisfying. Life with a God who judges based on all of the things we do or don't do that will never satisfy you. But a God that is good and frankly, it's really not up to us to determine whether God is something or not something. He is the one who has told us and made clear to us and life amplifies that his character is good and there's nothing about his character that is bad and there's nothing about his character 
that will change. The Bible says that God will give what is good to whoever asks. The Bible says that he will give plenty. He will give abundance. My Bible says what your Bible says, and it says that he will satisfy us with every good thing. I love what it says in Psalm 35. Psalm 35 verse no, Psalm 145, excuse me, verse 16. God, you open your hand and you satisfy the desire of every living thing. You open your hand and you satisfy the desire of every living thing. Boy, I want us to ask God for that, too, right now. I have a few more of these, but let's see if we could just double click here for a moment, because first Peter, chapter two, verse three says, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. And Psalm 145, verse 16, God, you open your hand and you satisfy the desire of every living thing. Can we pray that together right now? Just say, Heavenly Father, I thank you that you open your hand and you satisfy the desire of every living thing. Come on, pray that Heavenly Father, I thank you that you satisfy the desire of every living thing that you are reaching to me with an open hand. Say that out loud, that you are reaching to me with an open hand. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I am expecting your provision, your goodness. I'm expecting your goodness to satisfy me. I'm expecting your goodness to satisfy me spiritually. Say this. We're still praying. This is a prayer meeting now. Say, say this. I'm expecting your goodness to satisfy me spiritually. I'm expecting your goodness to satisfy me emotionally. I'm expecting your goodness to satisfy me physically. I'm expecting your goodness to satisfy me financially. I'm expecting your goodness. Come on, say it. I'm expecting your goodness to satisfy me in all my relationships. Lord, you have an open hand towards me and you satisfy every living thing. And as long as I'm living, I believe you will satisfy me in every discontent area of my life. Lord, I pray right now for every person who's feeling discontent, every person who's feeling life isn't fair, every person who's feel who feels like they're they're not satisfied. They're not satisfied in their home. They're not satisfied in their family. They're not satisfied at their job. They're not satisfied in their business. They're not satisfied with themselves. They're not satisfied in their relationships. God, I pray you who have an open hand towards us, you open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Lord, I pray that you would satisfy my desires that I don't even know about desires that are so deep in me that I don't even know them. Come on, pray that Heavenly Father, I believe you will satisfy the desires that are inside of me that I can't even explain or articulate or realize. Satisfy my desires that have no answer right now, Lord, satisfy my desires that have no hope right now. Satisfy my desires of things that I've given up on and never thought I could ever have. Satisfy my desires, Lord, with your goodness, with your open hand. What you have in your hand is enough to satisfy me. So I receive it. Do you hear that? What God has in his hands is enough to satisfy you. And it wouldn't satisfy you if he keeps what's in his hands closed. But the Bible says he with an open hand, satisfied. He opens his hand and satisfies the desire, not just the need, the desire of every living thing. Are you living? Check your pulse right now. Are you living? If you're a living thing, then God is going to satisfy every living thing, every desire of every living thing. Well, it's a powerful promise. And you know what? This is how God wants you to know him. He wants to know you or he wants you to know him as he really is. And he has an open hand to satisfy. The desire of you because you're a living thing. He satisfies every bird. He satisfies every worm. He satisfies every uh, he satisfies every animal in this world. Somehow they're fed. You might have picked up 
an animal that was wounded, an animal, a cat, for example, that was astray. You, guess what? God used you to satisfy the desire of that cat. You say, well, I did that, but God was making sure he provided for that animal. It might have come through you. It might have come through somebody else, but he opens his hand and satisfies the desire of every living thing. Well, I love the fact that the goodness of God satisfies everything. So let's review real quick. And I got one more to go over with you for this one. I got more if we get a chance to go over it next time. But the goodness of God explains everything when there's no explanation. God's goodness is going to prevail and God's goodness is going to have the last say and the final say of what you don't understand. God's going to make sure that his goodness explains everything. And then you'll look back and know that whatever happened in my life, now I see that God's goodness makes sense out of something that was senseless. God's goodness makes me understand something I couldn't understand. Now I see why that person crossed my path. Now I see why that person did what they did to me. And I see how God explains it all with his goodness. The goodness of God explains everything. The goodness of God surrounds everything. The goodness of God frees you from everything. The goodness of God satisfies everything. And number five, the goodness of God changes everything. The goodness of God changes everything. Hey, is there something in your life that needs to change? God's goodness guarantees it will change that thing. If you're looking for a change in your emotions, a positive change, God's goodness is going to change your negative emotions. If you're looking for a change in your relationships, it seems to be that they're not working. It seems to be that your marriage isn't working. The Bible says the goodness of God can change that thing. The goodness of God can change everything. The goodness of God will change how you look at things. The goodness of God will change how you treat people. The goodness of God will change how you treat yourself. The goodness of God will change how you react and you respond when bad things happen. The goodness of God changes everything. The goodness of God changes water into wine. The goodness of God changes sickness into healing. The goodness of God changes fear into faith. The goodness of God changes rejection into acceptance. The goodness of God changes the curse into a blessing. The goodness of God changes everything. Hey, listen to this verse. I love this verse in Romans chapter two, verse four in the Message Bible, particularly. It's such a beautiful verse. And it says this, it says God is kind but he is not soft. God is kind, but he is not soft in kindness. He takes us firmly by the hand and he leads us into radical life change. He takes us firmly by the hand. This is his goodness in kindness. And the word is goodness in kindness and goodness. He takes us by the hand and leads us into radical life change. You need a radical life change. You need a radical revival. You need a radical breakthrough. You need a radical um, charge of, of positivity and faith and joy and peace in your life. Well, you know what? We need to expect that the goodness of God changes everything and the goodness of God. He is kind, but he's not soft in kindness. He takes us firmly by the hand and leads us into a radical life change. Pray right now for this radical life change. Say, Heavenly Father, you're so kind. You're so good. Lead me. Take my hand and lead me into a radical life change. Take my hand and lead me into this next season of my life. Take your hand and take my hand, Lord, and lead me into this radical transformation of my attitude from negative to positive, from fear to faith, from worry to trust. In Jesus name, you know, there's no grace like the grace which comes from a dying Christ who died on the cross, a risen Christ who rose from the dead, a reigning Christ who rules and reigns in earth, in the earth and in heaven and a coming Christ. Jesus is all in all to all who are in him and he will 
transform your life. Faith comes when you believe in the grace of a dying Christ, the grace of a buried Christ, the grace of a risen Christ, the grace of a reigning Christ and the grace of a coming Christ. And by the way, the dying Christ who then rose and became the rain, the, the risen Christ is the Christ that protects you from the coming Christ and you won't be judged because your faith has been in the dying Christ and the risen Christ and the reigning Christ. So when that Christ comes, when Jesus Christ comes the second time, it will be for us. It will be without reference to our sins. For us, it will be without him judging us for us. It will be love. It will be he will reveal himself fully as he truly is. Right now we see through a glass dimly. We see through a glass dimly that his goodness explains everything. We see through a glass dimly that his goodness surrounds everything. We see through a glass dimly that his goodness frees us from everything we're in bondage to. We see that his goodness we see through a, a veil. We see we, there is no veil anymore, but we see through a glass dimly. We're not we don't see him fully yet as he is, but we're getting a better glimpse by understanding his goodness frees us from everything. His goodness satisfies everything and his goodness changes everything. Whatever needs to change in your life right now. I want you to expect it. I want you to put your faith in this beautiful God, in this beautiful savior, in this beautiful man that we call Jesus and we get to call our best friend. Maybe you're watching right now and you've never received this risen Christ into your life. You never received this Christ that died and rose from the dead. Why not receive him now? Why not pray and invite him into your life right now? In fact, let me just lead you in the simple prayer. Just pray this Heavenly Father. That's it. Just pray that out loud. Heavenly Father, I believe Jesus died for my sins and rose from the dead. I believe that the blood of Jesus washes away all my sin. I believe that Jesus is the son of God. Now, if you prayed that prayer, all you got to do is say amen. Jesus did all the work. All we're doing is receiving what he has done by faith in who he is and the finished work of the cross. Expect his goodness to change everything. Expect his goodness to satisfy everything. Expect his goodness to deliver you and free you from everything. Expect his goodness to surround you in everything. Expect his goodness to transform your life from what you envision that it could be to what God envisions it to be. I bless you in the name of Jesus. I bless every person. Lord, give every person a hope, give every person a revelation of the goodness of God, the good promises of God, the promises of your goodness to everyone. Give them an explosive revelation of how much goodness surrounds them all the days of their life, follows them all the days of their life, changes them all the days of our the days of their life, changes us all the days of our lives, surrounds us all the days of our lives and satisfies us all the days of our lives in Jesus name. Amen. I love you guys. Can't wait to see you at Think Like a Champion and our next Sunday service as well. We're here for you. Reach out if you need anything. Shout out a friend if you want them to experience this same goodness. Send the link to them. Let's spread the gospel. Let's take the gospel to this world. Let's show the world the goodness of God. Let's show the world the kindness of God that leads us to radical life.